New year. New me. I'm back. I'm not going to make an excuse for why I haven't made a video in six months, roughly. But I am happy to be back. Maybe I'm going to try to make more videos this year. Also going to try to make shorter intros. There's no point dilly-dallying and just rambling on. But this year's all about getting smarter, getting more intelligent, and getting even smarter. Rrr. We're going to take the world by storm this year. And to start it out, I thought we would look at vectors in Grasshopper, which really in the grand scheme of things is one of the most one of the most important things you can uh, focus on in, in january 2nd of 2022 let's not uh, waste our time and let's get into it okay here we are in grasshopper what i've done is i've just gone and created my own little xy uh, grid just to display and actually quick tip as I always goof this up, um, if you're struggling when you're rotating around in 3D space to re remember which one the red, green, and blue uh, values correlate to, it's always correlating to RGB. What's well, RGB? Correlating to XYZ. So red is X, green is Y, and blue is Z. Um, which always helps me out. Anyways, I just created this little thing just so we can quickly display over here. Um, and, I, and so what, I'm, what we're going to be looking at is vectors, which is obviously stored in the vector tab. It's broken down into many different things, fields, grids, planes, points, which all correlate to vectors. So it kind of shows the importance of vectors in terms of uh, where it is in. We've got a helicopter. Perfect. They're looking for me. Um, but anyways, well, mostly today we're going to be covering uh, these components with, that live within the vector tab, within the vector tab, so uh, vectorception over here. <clears throat> and, and these sort of break down to the constructors for vectors, so the components that you use to build your own vectors, sort of the analysis and like transformation of these vectors here, and then uh, more operators, uh, like uh, addition, subtraction, and more complex ones that you will see. <laughs> and sort of placing vectors into what you need, what you use them for. I kind of just grabbed a couple of opponents that I, off the top of my head, I knew you needed vectors to enter. Um, and you can immediately see that you kind of need vectors to do a lot of things in Grasshopper. Uh, any, any type of transformation, essentially, you're going to need um, vectors. For example, moving, simply moving in geometry requires vectors. Rotating geometry requires yeah, vectors. Orientating any of your objects requires vectors. Offsetting requires vectors. Whether it's a normal value, which is a vector, or it's you know a z value or an x value, all vectors. Um, projecting, extruding, arraying, all the things require vectors. So I think it's like a good idea to have a good grasp on what a vector is. Anyways, what is a vector? A vector is simply uh, position and an, a magnitude, what it's called, or and sometimes that's intermittently changed with length, but and you can kind of see that swapping in and out of grasshopper magnitude, length, and sometimes amplitude. But um, but just always remember that it's just a length or a magnitude and a position, which you can clearly see in our very first component, which is vector x y z, which is just creating a vector. And I would, and let's, let's, I guess, not uh, mess around. I'm just going to create a symbol vector, and I'm going to ignore Z for now, just because it's nice to view it on a 2D chart. It'll, it'll make a lot more um, sense when we start talking about addition and subtraction. I've noticed I've plugged in all three of these things, and it doesn't make anything. I don't see anything coming out of Grasshopper, and this is, this is innate, this component's enabled. Well, so what Grasshopper does not do is show vectors. It does not display vectors. So you actually have to bring in a vector display. This is not some additional component. This is part of Grasshopper. Um, and what you need for this is you need to plug in a vector and you need to plug in an anchor point. And an anchor point, we could just, let's just use the uh, center. So I'm going to do a little shortcut to the panel, curly bracket, zero, 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 and then close curly bracket. And there we are. 
And now you'll notice that right away we're actually seeing something. So now as we change these, we can see that we are creating, we've created our first vector, which is simple and this does have a length. So this is that what we're calling magnitude. Anyways, so there's many more obviously points to this. For example, this vector can be used to move an object from here to here, or it can be used to make, for example, if I had a point up here, for example, let's just make a point. For example, if I have a point, I can simply, oh man, I always get that up. I could simply assign that vector to that point as well. So it doesn't inherently have to be zero, zero, zero. This vector can be assigned to any point. And a field of points, for example, I could take a hundred points and change and move every object by that. Anyways, you can start to see where the power um, comes into it. But for now, we're just going to use the, uh, the start point. Anyways, okay, so, so as of course you can construct a vector this way, you can also deconstruct a vector this way. So simply, simply saying this will just output that 2, 4, and 0 here. So for example, 2, 4, 0. Nothing too complicated. You'll notice you will want to use these when you're breaking vectors down to know for example, the, the height of the object that you're moving or something like that. So that's just a, a simple way of um, doing that. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect that just to keep it clean. Um, so one of, but one of the most common that I find methods of creating vectors is using this two point because what, you're, what I always seem to find is design my projects in this workflow where I have I know, for example, like the center point of an object I have, and then I have a, uh, a bunch of points, you know, um, on a surface, and then I need to move that object to that, uh, those surfaces. So that's, so I define one as the center or the start point or the center point of the object, and then all those points on the surface as the B, and it would create that vector that you need to move all that geometry over. Um, so I tend to actually use vector two point a lot. And this, and this can be basically treated the same. I'm gonna turn off this vector. And we're gonna vector, we're gonna create another vector here. And this component also allows us to do one more thing, which is quite um, nice, which is this U down here, which is called unitize, which basically takes the magnitude of your vector which right now is 5.916. And it will create it. Here, let's see what happens if I do true. It'll put that to one. And this is, this is pretty nice when you're, when you're dealing with fields of vectors and you're not so much worried about the weight of the vector or how long it is. You're worried about the direction of it. And it also helps when you're uh, moving into remapping numbers and that's a whole other thing. So, so this is a somewhat powerful option and you can either, um, you can do here or there is another uh, unitize unit vector right here where you just plug a vector in and outcome output will be, a, it'll set the magnitude of that vector to one. Anyways, okay, so we have, great. So we have uh, another way of building vectors, great. Um, and then we, of course, we have X, Y, and Z which, oh wait, let me just copy these guys. Dun, dun. What does uh, X vector look like? I hope, I hope you should be able to guess out what does a Y vector look like? And a Z vector we won't see because it's we're looking at top view. But anyways, these are, these are very familiar and I'm sure you've used these uh, a million times when offsetting or extruding or anything. Um, Okay, so now moving into more of the analysis um, components. Just starting off, we just have vector length. I'm actually going to copy this vector. We're going to use it now to, to start moving through these next ones. Um, so for example, if I plug that in here. Oh, I shouldn't have plugged the length. If I plug that into here, I will be able to receive that same length. And let's actually preview on, and I'm, and I'm going to change this. No, I'll keep that for the way it is. <clears throat> okay, um, amplitude. 
So amplitude is a way of magnifying the magnitude. It's a way of manipulating it. And what it does is, so if we plug a vector into here, and actually now we're not going to display it. I want to display this vector. So what it's done is you can see the amplitude is already set to one. So what this does is it allows you to reset that length to anything. So I guess in, in a way, in this case, it is the magnitude. I don't know why it changes, um, but it just is. So, so for example, if I set it to one, it's gonna be the exact same vector as if I take this unit vector one and display the unit vector. And there you go. You can see they're exactly the same. So it's, yeah, and, and, I, and you, you'll find you're gonna use this, um, this amplitude component a lot as you, as you sort of, as you, as you build your, your, your fields or, your, or your, the amount, whenever you're doing something parametric, you're gonna have you know, varying um, numbers across surfaces or whatnot. And you're gonna find that when you need to, for example, extrude, you're gonna be varying the amplitude that you want extruded across your surface. And, and it's gonna, and that's just how you're going to control it is with that amplitude component. Okay, and so we've already talked about unit vector. Um, reverse, reverse is a very, I mean, very uh, intuitive one. Let's just move this down here. It's going to reverse your vector. It's going to just turn it into a, a negative vector. I mean, you could go in here and just turn those all to negative numbers, and you'll get the same thing without reversing it, but reverse will allow you to do that. Anyways, and then we're going to look at quickly at rotate which all it is is going to ask for three different variables, which is the vector to rotate, rotation axis, and the rotation axis in ra radians, specifically not degrees. Um, so for example, we can take this, put in a vector. Let's just, let's just keep it simple and rotate on the Z axis so we can just preview it here. And then let's just go to radians and then display. And you can see right here how you can now manipulate that vector. I don't, I don't, I'm not using rotate vector too much. I find it's weird because you would already construct a normal vector and then be rotating around. It would be just make more sense to create the vector in the right direction or the direction you wanted it in. Um, so anyway, I don't find that one that useful, but I guess in this, uh, little series I'm trying to demonstrate the, the different um, the different capabilities of it. Anyways, okay, so I'm going to disconnect all of these. And now we're going to move into more of the interesting uh, components. So first we're going to be looking at what happens when with addition and subtraction of vectors. And this, so I'm just going to create a second one because we need uh, And I'm actually going to remove um, the Z just because, once again, we can't see it. Anyways, so now we have two vectors, which let's, let's just quickly, let's bring up. Okay. So we have two vectors. <clears throat> And we want to add. You might use this, for example, if you have a field of forces and you have competing forces, you might find yourself adding together. For example, if, if you have a point and, the, and it has two different attractors, you know, so there's, so there's two different attractors or ten different attractors or whatever it is, you might be finding it that you would actually add these vectors and then divide by the amount of vectors uh, that you're adding together to get sort of the average. It's a very intuitive thing to add vectors, actually, because what it will simply do is it will take, it will add across. So, for example, this 5 will be added to the 10, the 1 will be added to the 4, and the 0 will be added to the 0, which when you actually add them together, 
And this isn't, by the way, this is not a special vector addition. This is a straight, just normal addition. <clears throat> and you can see it will output a vector result, which we can display right here. Actually, I shouldn't have copied that. Let's, here, I'm gonna bring that back. Okay, so now we have the two original ones. Let's move this guy over. So we have the two original ones in green, and then we have the, the, the addition now in green. Um, and what you're gonna notice is that this looks very uh, familiar because this vector plus this vector, if you add those coordinates, it's gonna amount to those two end vectors being stacked end on end to each other. So for example, if I take this vector, and actually I tell it to start at that point, you're gonna see that it shows exactly where it's gonna to add to. And, and I can also vice, or uh, wait, oh, did I just goof that up? <clears throat> Okay, so those two, and then I can I could also do it the other way, where this guy starts there. So you can see how the addition is actually a very geometrically appropriate um, and sort of mathematically beautiful way of solving things. And you're going to find that it's very similar also with subtraction. So let's move these guys down the way. Let's disconnect. So now we have two vectors, and let's see what would happen if we want to subtract these two vectors. Vector vector and resulting vector which once again we need to display you're going to see that interesting enough once again it was in the same manner where you go 5 minus 10 is minus 5 1 minus 8 is minus 7 0 minus 0 so it should be minus 5 minus 7 0 as you can see in the little uh in the little drop down menu which it is and if we went to swap those, we would now have a different result. Actually, let's, let's do both of those. Let's display both. And so these green arrows are the results of the, um, of the subtraction. And you know, we can actually see that how they would be uh, geometrically um, beautiful as well if this vector or this vector started at this point but was reversed you would be, then you'd be able to of course to see that how this line would move to there um yeah so there you go you have addition subtraction and now we're going to move on to two of the um uh, most complicated uh, portions of vectors, which I'm kind of dreading trying trying to explain. And actually, I think I'll ex explain them just through a simple diagram that I'll draw. Um, so dot product, what does dot product do? So what dot product does is it actually, it's going to add together these, these values. So well, let's actually see what happens. So we're gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to require two vectors, so a, b, a vector, b vector, and then it once again just going to allow you to unitize it or not to create it to one, uh, magnitude to one. <clears throat> so what dot product to do is actually it's going to multiply 5 and 10 together, and, and then 1 and 8 together, and then 0 and 0 together, and it's just going to add those values. So we're going to get 50, 1 times 8, 8. So we're going to get the dot product is actually just going to be Oh, wait, wait, I have it unitized. Let me, so let's see. So let's put there. Yep, and it's 58. So it actually just gives you an integer, which is wildly interesting. Um, and, and, you, and generally, I don't find this value to be that useful. But what I have found to be very useful, and I'll explain what I use this for in a second, is when you do unitize this, and now it creates that number to be within a range. And I'll draw, for example, uh, an example of that. 
So as these two vectors, so the closer those two vectors are to being parallel, then it will equal to one. So for example, if these two vectors are input as A and B, as vector A, vector B, you, and you would notate that as arrow A dot B, arrow B, that will equal to one. And why it will equal to one? Because they are completely parallel. And the more towards, and the more unparallel they are, so for example, if, if I, that's not A anymore, if now that is A, then it won't equal 1 anymore, now it will equal 0.12. And this is, and this is a great thing to show to show sameness or parallelness within a bunch of vectors. So for, and I have a, uh, so this wonderful example that I saw recently, um, someone used this to calculate snow on their topography. So I'm just gonna draw a simple section. So it's like, hey, we have some mountains and sort of like cliffy mountains. So imagine this is a section profile of a mesh. Where do we wanna put snow on this? We wanna isolate it on these peak areas, correct? So we can use the dot product to calculate this. We can, so let's, for example, take vector z as one of those vectors. So vector a in that dot product, input would be vector z. <clears throat> and what we can do is take, you know, all the mesh normals. So we can take all of those vectors and input that as the other vector. And also you're gonna get some of these. So, and you can see immediately that the vectors that are more parallel to Z, this so will have, they're all gonna have different amounts. So for example, this one will have one, let's just say this one will have one. This one will have point uh, three, this one will have point five, this one will have point seven, this one will have point, point eight. So what it will do, is you'll be allowed to filter out. So you're like, no, we're only going to take the vectors that are like 0.7 and above, or 0.5 and above, to create snow. And then what you can do is you'll see, like for example, then if you offset that mesh with only allowing the vectors that have a dot product above 0.5, you'll get an offset here for snow. These are these values are too low. Here, you start to get an offset. Around there, you'll start to get snow here. No, 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 no. You'll get a little snow in the gallet and the gully. And then here, starting out again, you're going to start getting snow again. So it's a really beautiful way of relating two vectors in terms of sameness. So. And you could, you could use this just to calculate if it was facing in the x direction or not, or in the y direction, or in the z direction, or any direction you want to input. So it's a kind of a complex um, and a complicated component to start to understand how to use. But know that even though it doesn't output a variable or it doesn't output a vector, it still can be very valuable in terms of solving more complex, sort of almost computer science issues. Okay, cross product. So we have our two vectors. Once again, this is also asking for cross uh, two vectors. And what you're gonna find out is that cross product is gonna give us a vector. And you're gonna see here, actually, that that vector that it's giving us, here, let's just print it out. We're not gonna be able to preview it because it's only in Z. Oh, and I also don't preview. Um, but what it does simply, more simply, that I can, once again I can draw, is it will, you'll input two vectors. Let's just give it this vector and this vector. And it's gonna give us a third vector that's this. So 
So this is the cross prod. And this might eerily look like something you're familiar with, which a gumball or an XYZ thing. And it's true. That's what it can be used for. If I were to, let's just get rid of it actually, this, that's what wasn't the best example. Um, for example, if I was to put into an X value into here and a Y, remember X and these Y are both just coordinate or vectors. Look, if you notice, it's going giving me a Z vector. So it's actually outputting a Z vector. And if I put in a, da, 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 let's just, let's, and if I put in a Z, let's just get rid of the X. If I put in a Z and a Y, then it gives me a negative X vector. And you can see how this works is, so you can use this on a surface, for example, if you, if you are, um, this can be used often to like calculate normals and something. So if you have sort of a, a complex surface and you, and you, and you have this sort of grid, you know, and you have these points a lot on it, you can always take those like vectors in the U and V direction and get the cross product to get that normal value. And you would be able to do this at any point of the surface. And it will give you a, a normal value to that surface. So that's sort of the beauty and benefit of um, cross product. Anyways, I hope that worked. I hope that helps you out. I hope you learned something. I actually enjoyed spending some time like looking into vectors and I hope this video also didn't go on too long. Um, it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, I just kind of wanted to make this one, get it out of the way, get my feet back running and, and just start doing things again because I think I was starting to get into my head a little bit about making videos was it good enough like I, I would just rather output videos uh, also YouTube doesn't allow you to dis uh, dislike it so even if you don't like my video guess what you can't do anything about it <laughs> speaking of that please like and subscribe if you enjoyed my content and happy new year and we'll be seeing a little bit more of me so